Uh, dear uh, viewers, friends from all over the world, Albanian viewers of uh, my channel, uh, welcome to uh, my conversation that I'm going to make today with my uh, uh, usual suspect friend, uh, Mr. Jerzy Fanasi. And uh, salam alaikum to all Muslim viewers of my channel. Today is the 20th of February 2022. Uh, I'm calling from Kuala Lumpur, <laughs> while Jerzy is in uh, Duros in Albania. And today with Jerzy, we're going to talk about some astonishing facts about the involvement of the Mujahideen al-Halq, ex-terrorist organization which is hosted in uh, by Albania. And we're going to talk about some astonishing facts that were revealed in the Albanian media during this week, where we have learned from uh, various uh, media sources that the Mujahideens have uh, been caught by the Albanian police uh, trafficking uh, uh, refugees and drugs in uh, Europe. Uh, this news, which was first uh, published by uh, Gazeta uh, Shiptaria, uh, a newspaper which is run by an Italian citizen in Albania. I'm going to share uh, uh, the screen uh, now. With he is also a double citizen. He is also an Albanian citizen. Yes. So the, the yeah. So the person for whom we are talking, uh, whose name is the uh, uh, Carlo Bolino, he is an Albanian, but also uh, an Italian citizen. So, I'm going to share the screen here, but uh, I, I, I think I cannot find it. Uh, where, okay, it should be like this, I think. Where I'm going to show some, why? I don't understand what's going on with my Skype. Uh, I'm going to, to show uh, the pages of, uh, okay, here we are. Yeah, we, we can share now. So, <coughs> uh, I, I'm going to share a number of uh, articles. Jerzy, can you see the article? Yeah, I okay. can see it. Okay, so we have the first article, which was published uh, uh, on uh, 17th of February, 2022 by Gazeta uh, Shiptare and uh, the TV which is affiliated with this uh, newspaper called uh, Report TV. As I mentioned before, uh, when we started the introduction with Giorgi, Gazeta Shiptare is run by a man known as uh, Carlo Bolino. He's an Italian, also uh, Albanian citizen, uh, who has uh, good connections with uh, Italian uh, agencies and uh, uh, the government. And um, in general, uh, Gazeta Shiptaria is considered as uh, a, a serious uh, uh, newspaper in Albania, even though it pampers a bit the government of uh, Edirama and Rilindia. So we have uh, Gazeta Shiptaria, which uh, published a police report, uh, which uh, the Albanian police had directed to the U.S. Embassy in Tirana. And in this article, it is written, the Mujahideens hosted uh, in uh, Manza, they are involved in uh, uh, human trafficking and trafficking of drugs. This article, which was published, uh, uh, I think, in uh, probably 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, later on, 3 p.m. was removed from the newspaper. So here you have another uh, print uh, shot of uh, the article where we can read that uh, the news uh, is of course offline and it is being uh, waiting. It is being previewed to be verified. Okay, so, okay, this is the same article. Now, the, the, the thing is this, that after, the publi uh, after publishing of uh, this uh, document by Gazeta Shiptaria, we have the state police, which came out with a press release I think this press release came on 20th. No, I made the print screen, I think, on 20th of February. But I, I think the, 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 the press release from state police came on the same day. And it was published in Gazeta Sheptaria and also in the Facebook 
of Albanian state police, where uh, Albanian state police uh, claimed that the news which was published by uh, different medias, because we don't have only Gazeta Shiftaria, we have even other news portals which published it, uh, which claims that Albanian state police has sent a letter to the embassy of uh, United States in Tirana, which alludes about the involvement of the Mujahideens who are hosted by Albania in the traffic of drugs and the refugees. Uh, and it says the state police did not send any such report to the U.S. embassy in Tirana, where it is uh, where we speak about the implication of the MKO in the human and the drug trafficking. The press release by state police, which is in front of you here, does not deny the fact that the Mujahideens are involved in human and drug trafficking, but the press release, which probably was written on orders of Gladys Nano, who is uh, the general director of state police of Albania, who, as I've explained in my Twitter account, has previously worked as a spy for anti-terror police and was involved in jailing of dozens of Albanian Muslims and even in the deportation of the Iranian ambassador from Albania. So in this press release, um, the uh, Albanian state police, they do not deny that we have arrests or that the Mujahideens are involved in, in human and uh, drug trafficking. But what this press release says, is that we have not sent any such letter to the embassy of the United States in Tehran, Albania. Now, the news about uh, the Mujahideens who have been caught trafficking was published by a number of other Albanian newspapers and news portals, like lapsi.al, that you can read it here, where you have the title, Scandal, Police Catch Mujahideen Involved in Trafficking, protected by embassies, which means uh, for people who read the article, the article was saying more or less that while Albanian police have caught the Mujahideen, we have the U.S. embassy which uh, defends them. And here is the article again in Albanian now, and by uh, the same title, and protected by the embassies means the U.S. embassy. And we have also uh, the largest news portal of the Albanian opposition called Suri.net, <laughs> where they also published uh, a, a, rep, uh, a comment about what Gazeta Shiptaria also wrote. And the title is, The Police, they catch the Mujahideens who are involved in uh, trafficking, but they are liberated after because embassies protect them. Now, the Mujahideens, they have been uh, throughout these past weeks in, in the media in Albania, for so many reasons. Actually, starting from last year, 2021, we had a news portal in Albania called Exit.al, which uh, published, uh, I think, uh, two articles, but one which was very shocking, whereby uh, Alice Taylor, a British journalist which works for Exit.al, uh, she published uh, more or less the same thing that Shiptaria published, where she had uh, information from Albanian state police that uh, uh, the Mujahideens have been arrested. Uh, top Mujahideen commanders, Nargesh, Abri, Shamchi, and another guy that I cannot recall his name now, Hassan. Uh, Sam his name uh, is uh, Hassan Nayeb Aga. Hassan, Hassan Nayeb Aga. So we have uh, uh, Nargis Abri Shamchi, which is the sister-in-law of Mariam Rajabi, also sister of Abri Shamchi, of Mehdi Abri Shamchi, the, the first husband of uh, Mariam. So we have the sister of uh, Mehdi Abri Shamchi, who heads the anti-terrorism committee of the National Council of Resistance of Iran, and other bullshit that they have. And we have this Hassan Aga, who was a, a sportist in Iran, and then he uh, defected from Iran and he joined the Mujahideens. So we have these two Mujahideen commanders who were caught uh, trafficking drugs to Italy. Now, we are having the Mujahideens uh, in so many other uh, uh, medias in Albania, where, of course, uh, for me and Jerzy, who we are following the Mujahideens since many years, we know the story, Mujahideens pay a lot of money, and of course they use even the U.S. Embassy in Tirana 
to whitewash their crimes. So here we have another news from 30th of January from Top, Top Channel TV, and you can read the title, Exclusive Investigation for the Monies of the Mujahideens, 48 uh, transfers, over 1 million euros. Uh, there was an investigation for the Mujahideens who did money laundering. And the article which was published by Top Channel on 30th of January showed how the prosecutor uh, Anila Chirimi, if I'm not wrong, Chilimi, Chilimi. Chilimi, Anila Chilimi, a prosecutor who had the file in front of her, brought probably by a, a crime unit of a, maybe anti-terror police or some other police department in... No, no, no it was the Inner Revenue Office. Uh, from the Inner Revenue, thank, thank you for correcting. From the public prosecutor. Okay, so, okay, so we had the Inner Revenue Office who had sent to the prosecutor uh, a file about the Mujahideens, where the Mujahideens were shown that they have made 48 money transfers probably from, from outside or inside the country. We don't, I don't know the details. Where the Mujahideen... From abroad, from abroad into Albania. Thank you. Where they had taken more than 1 million euros and these euros then were channeled into uh, uh, companies in order to be laundered and cleaned. Now, what we uh, saw from the report of uh, Top Channel and uh, uh, what is the name of this journalist, uh, Gergi? Uh, I don't know. I don't uh, know. She, uh, you know her. She she was the one who brought even our name last time. I forgot her name. Hey, yeah, we were you and me were spreading yeah. uh, uh, false information to about, create blah 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 about coronavirus. Yeah, I forgot her name. Uh, Anila Anila something. Anila Hoja. No, no, I forgot. Hey, never mind. So what? what? what so, so what, what uh, and I think her name is Anila, if I'm not wrong. So what we have in this report from Top Channel, the whole story short was that the Mujahideen, they had taken 1 million euros from outside Albania. They had made 48 transfers. They had sent this money into fake companies. They have laundered this money and they have taken the money back. And when the Mujahideen were sent in the front of the prosecutor and the prosecutor had asked them, what are you doing? Where is this money coming from? Why you are you doing money laundering? The excuse that they used was that we are fighting with Iran and because we fight with Iran, we have to do money laundering so that Iran cannot... No, 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 no. it was not money laundering. We are freedom fighters. We are fighting against Iran. So it is no money laundering. It is for the lofty ideals of... Uh, the revolution, uh, the revolution. Yeah, yeah, freedom, liberty, yeah. Yeah, but in, in the conclusion is this, the Mujahideen can do money laundering because it's Iran there, so they can hide the sources of their income. And uh, the conclusion of the report uh, uh, that uh, Top Channel uh, 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 transmitted from what uh, the conclusion of the prosecutor was that the security of the, of the Mujahideen is guaranteed by the Americans. And for this reason, they are good guys, so they can do as much money laundering as they want. And we have this other uh, document from uh, the office of the prosecutor of uh, Tirana. Uh, which date is this, Jerzy? You don't know the date. Do you know the date of this? Yes, uh, it is uh, uh, 29th of March, 2021. Okay, so this is March. So this is from March. So this Almost is from one year ago. Okay, so this is from March 21, when we have one top Mujahideen commander, his name Mohammed Sadat Darbandi, who has been arrested for stealing, in collaboration with other Albanians, of a pharmacy in Camus. In a, it is a burglary. To be more precise, it is a burglary. There are two cases of burglary, not one. Two okay. cases of Okay, so I'm stopping the sharing of uh, 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 of the documents. Uh, we have some more documents that we're going to share later on. So, Jerzy, <coughs> let us come to the latest scandal about the news that was published by uh, Gazeta Shiptaria of Carlo Bolino. The, uh, 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 the press release by the state police claiming 
that we didn't send any such report to the Americans and the removal of the article. What is going on? First of all, this is not uh, the latest news. There are new and great developments. I will deal with them later on. About uh, the article of uh, Gazeta Shitare, it's not that important. It is a, a way of censorship. As an Albanian patriot, I feel very sorry that the state police of Albania, uh, a police body which is paid by the money of Albanian taxpayers, me and you included, uh, has become a kind of henchman to Rajavi cult. Because such a document exists, dear policeman. It is, at least one copy of it, is in English. I am uh, stressing the fact that it is in English to show them that there are copies of the document. They cannot change things in the archive. It is too late to change things in the archive. And we should not forget that uh, official papers, official documents in Albania are uh, circulated by post, by mail. So there are traces in our uh, mail company, which is a public company in Albania, not only in the police uh, archives. So the letter exists, it is in English. Maybe there is a copy in Albanian. I haven't seen the copy in Albanian. So the letter exists, and what is more important, the facts in the letter are true. The facts are much more than you said. For example, it is almost 100 cases of uh, criminal procedure, burglary, pickpocketing, human uh, trafficking, drug running, uh, even a case of sexual harassment, uh, land grabbing, uh, money laundering or attempting money laundering, etc., etc. Almost 100 cases. There are less than 3,000 uh, people in the Ashraf camp three uh, in uh, Manas, and we have over 100. Uh, uh, criminal proceedings in the last, uh, let us say, three years. So it's not an exception. It is a rule. Rajavi cult is uh, engaged in intensive criminal activity in Albania. I don't care about their struggle against Iran. Okay, it create, create problems uh, between uh, in the relations between two sovereign nations. The Islamic Republic of Iran and Republic of Albania, but leave it aside. Let's stick to criminal cases. They are violating the Albanian law and they do not care when they are caught red handed. They do not care. They continue their activity. The last uh, case of such violations of the Albanian uh, penal uh, criminal code was last night, uh, the cult organized the illegal crossing of border from Albania to Greece to four persons, a couple, I do not have the names of the couple, meaning a man and a woman married together, and also two persons, excuse me, uh, their names are Mehrdad Bazazian, the, and uh, Ali Reza Gaitani, I repeat, Mehrdad Bazazian, Ali Reza Gaitani. So, so the, these people, they left, they left Albania last night? Yes, illegally. They Not were through the border point, but uh, using uh, uh, what we call green border, meaning uh, through forest, uh, meadows, and things like this. Okay, and, hold, on, hold on a second. Yes, please. Uh, uh, now, okay, now, no, the thing is this, so you are telling to us facts that last night, the Mujahideen, they have trafficked four people from Albania into Greece, which is a 
which is a crime according to penal code of Albania. Am I right? Yes, yes. You okay. go to prison. If you and me try to traffic people to Greece, we go to prison. Yeah, we know Albanians are not allowed even to give water to the Syrian refugees that we have in Albania. But the Mujahideens are doing this freely and they did this last night. They sent people... And, and my info, uh, very detailed info, is not from our police. Forget about it, brother policeman. I have no mole in your uh, establishment. It comes from the Greek part. It comes from colleagues in Greek, from Greek journalists. There is a certain high degree of alarm in the ranks of Greek police. Even a camp, uh, Echo, Kilo, Alpha, Mike, the acronym of a special police in Greece, uh, counter terrorist unit of Greek police, is alarmed. Because these two persons has a problematic past. They have a formal uh, terrorist training, and they ha maybe they have also battlefield experience. These are very important things. These are not two poor Syrians or Afghans or uh, Morocco people or uh, uh, people from Mali, from uh, Burkina Faso coming to Europe to have a better life. This is quite different. There are tens of thousands of illegal migrants in Greece, sorry, maybe over 100,000, yet they constitute a small problem. These are problematic because their formal training in terrorism or in guerrilla warfare, whatever you prefer to choose as a term. They have formal training in guerrilla warfare and maybe battlefield experience. This is very great. This is a bell of alarm for Greek police. This is what uh, a Greek journalist told me. One thing, it is very easy. I defy Albanian police to go to the camp to be uh, to, uh, to gather the courage because it, it is an act of courage to go to the gate of the camp, Ashraf Tri camp, and to ask them, please, so and so are in the camp or are not in the camp. Our police have got their papers, their fingerprints, their photos. Where are these two persons? Show to us, show their faces. Are they in the camp? Have they fled the camp? Are they dead in the grave? Where are these two persons? So, the last crime committed by, by any K in Albania was last time. Maybe they say that, well, they are not here, they crossed to Greece, but we don't know, we don't know. But the fact is, these two persons are not in Albania. There is a manhunt in Greece, take my word for it about these two persons. The couple is not important, at least for the Greek journalists. But these two persons are very important. The couple is rank and file, uh, 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 small fish. These should be big fish. These are important persons. Jerzy, let me make you... Uh, point of view of counter-terrorism, uh, important from the point of view of counter-terrorism. Jerzy, let me uh, ask you another question. Uh, I think last year, the Mujahideens, they trafficked to France, Hadi Sanikani. Was it last year? Uh, yeah, 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 okay. last year. So H Hadi Sanikani was one of the uh, defectors of the Mujahideens, one of the people that the Mujahideens were attacking so much, were claiming for him to be an agent of uh, the mullahs of Iran, etc., etc. And uh, uh, finally, uh, what we found out was that Hadi was in a way recruited by the Mujahideens to spy on his friends with whom he was staying in Tirana. And they, uh, uh, in order for him to write a fake letter, where among others, Hadi Sanikani claimed that me and you were being paid by Iran, and we're getting 5,000 spies, and we're getting 5,000 euro per month. And I've asked you on my Facebook page, Please, if, if, if uh, Iranians giving you 5,000, you have to give me my salary, Georgie, because uh, I'm, I'm short of money and I'm going to sue you. I'm going to take Mariam Rajavi to court to testify on my behalf. So <laughs> the, 
They took this poor <laughs> man. They, they took this poor man, Hadi Sanikani, they trafficked him to France. After trafficking him to France, Mehdi Abrishamchi, who heads uh, the Council Against Terrorism of the National Council of Resistance of Bullshit of Iran, uh, he published his letter where Hadi Sanikani, among others, was saying that me and you will get 5,000 euro per month from Iran. Alhamdulillah, may, may Iran, may, may, may God bless Iran, and may Iran give us a salary after all. But they republished his letter, I, I, I saw in, in one of their websites today or yesterday, they had reduced our salary, Jerzy, from 5,000 per month. They said that we get 1,000, bad luck. But still, I hope that we receive the, the salary from Iranians. Anyhow, leaving the joke aside and the idiocy of uh, the Mujahideens, we have a clear fact from Albanian police, in front of the Albanian pol police. And in that time, when the scandal of Hadi Sanikani was announced by the Mujahideens. I even wrote to Interior Ministry of, of France. We made a video together. We, we, we described who is Sadika, uh, Hadi Sanikani. He's a drug addict, a person who was taking, you can correct me what drugs he was taking. Then how this, this poor and sick man was taken by the Mujahideens. They told him, if you write a letter to attack Orsi and Jerzy and other defectors in Albania, we will send you to France. So he was trafficked, if I'm not wrong, via Athens, and he was sent probably with fake passport to Paris. Now we have a clear case of human trafficking. And we have this man, the first husband of uh, 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 Mariam Rajavi, who is probably her, 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 her only husband now, if, uh, if uh, uh, what is the name of this uh, Masoud Rajavi has, has died. So now we have the first husband of this old lady, Marianne, who traffics somebody to Paris, uh, tells him, if we send you to Paris, we'll send you to a safe house, but you have to write a letter what we dictate to you. And we have the Albanian police who do not move and who not even uh, arrest or question Mehdi Abrishamchi and to tell him, do you know this man? How did you send this man to, to Paris? Okay. Not only they do not arrest or question Abrishamse, but they do not question you or me, because our secret service has uh, a lawful duty to do counterintelligence work. So they have to question us. Iranian spy you, Iranian spy me. They didn't do their job. They are paid yeah. for it. Yeah, Hadi Sani Khan is claiming, is, is, no, is claiming that me and you, uh, Mehdi Abrishanti is doing that, we are taking 5,000 euros per month. And according to Albanian laws, we have minimum to pay the VAT, which is like 1,000 euros per month. And this, no, 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 it is a, it is a direct tax, uh, it is a, a tax on income. You and me have to pay a tax on income. So, of these uh, 5,000 euros per month. So how much? So we, have to, we have to pay like 1,000 1, euro each, correct? Uh, no, 500, 500, 500. per month. And this money will go... This, will... Is uh, this is evasion. It is a criminal offense in Albania. Okay, so we have Mehdi Abrishamchi, who takes this poor man, Hadi Sanikani, tells him write a letter and say that Orsi and Jerzy are getting 5,000 euros per month. Now, we're doing, we're, we're spies, both of you. We're receiving a good salary, mashallah. And we're doing a, a fiscal evasion. Now, look how many crimes we have. We have human trafficking. Uh, we have incidents with Greece and France. The, the Greeks and France should be crazy with Albania for allowing Mehdi Abrishamchi to traffic this poor drug addict to Paris. And then we have a fiscal evasion we're not paying tax, and this tax have to go to our uh, to our government. I mean, our prime minister needs money. You know, he, Albania has so much debt. So uh, the the counterterrorism police doesn't come to to question us and to check our pockets. Where did we put? Because five thousand is big money, Jersey. You know, I mean, uh, how much does the dirama get in a month? Per month. month. Yeah, it's big money. I mean, I mean, we we take as much money as Eddie Rama, Ilir Meta, and uh, I don't know some other ministers. So. Uh, our police doesn't do anything. And we have a clear case of human trafficking being committed by the Mujahideens, and our government doesn't do anything. What's going on, Georgie?
just a second, I have to jot down something. So, uh, it is not that these people are violating continuously, uh, continuously Albanian uh, law. They are creating problems between Albania and our allies in NATO, because Albania is a NATO state member. So, they are creating problems between Albania and Greece because Albania is used as a kind of springboard to smuggle people in. Then we have the drug running. Albania is used as a springboard to uh, smuggle drugs into Italy. There were facts, not hearsay talk, facts in official documents that Drangheta is in collusion with MEK. Drangheta is serious Italian organized crime. He is not a, just a gang of juvenile criminals in Albania. He's very serious and very dangerous. If we have organized crime of Drangheta in collusion combined with people who have formal training in terrorism or guerrilla warfare, whatever you prefer, and some, in some cases, battlefield experience, this is an explosive combination. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Italians are going crazy, especially a branch of Italian police called Digos. I repeat, Digos. They are very particular about the combination of Drangheta and MEK people in the, in the area of drug trafficking. And it's not drugs in quantities of grams of kilos. We are speaking here of hundreds of kilos of drugs traffic uh, uh, from Albania into Italy, thanks to a happy combination of MBK, Albanian mobsters, and Italian organized crime called Drangheta of Reggio Calabria. This is the area in Italy which is called Reggio Calabria. Maybe they are trafficking not only drugs. And we are speaking here of hundreds of kilos of class B drugs, but also class A drugs, aka cocaine. Hundreds of kilos, not grams, not one kilo. Hundreds of kilos. I repeat it because I, I want to drive the message. By the way, this is hearsay talk. Uh, Giorgio Starace, His Excellency, the Italian ambassador in Moscow, had uh, talks, or I better say, a chat with the Iranian ambassador. Maybe the insidious work of MEK in Albania was one of the topics, maybe. This is hearsay talk, because I was not present in uh, that uh, friendly chatting between Italian ambassador uh, Giorgio Starace and the Iranian ambassador in Moscow. This is hot news. Two or three days ago it happened. I'm not sure uh, exactly. Now, what uh, makes me is that the crimes committed by MEK continue. They are caught red-handed, they don't care. They continue. They do not stop. For example, we had this uh, Hassan Nayebaga, ex uh, soccer player, turned into revolutionary, then terrorist, and uh, then uh, drug smuggler. We have also Narges Abrishamshe. 11th of July uh, 2021. Then we have Farid Shakharam. Farid Shakharam. He worked, he was an ex MEK member. He worked for a company in Albania called Market Info Shopaka. Market Info Shopaka. He vanished. He is not anymore in Tirana. He vanished. Journalists, Austrian journalists, say that maybe he is in Vienna. He is a computer specialist. What is he doing with computers in the end? I don't know. And Austrian police 
is uh, worried about what Mr. Farid Shahkarami, Shahkarami is. Let us continue. It's not only this. They continue to smuggle people to this and then to Europe. In January 2022, uh, you see the dates, uh, progressive dates. Mehdi Mazlumi and Bachman Rahimi, two persons, were smuggled from Albania into Greece, target country somewhere in Western Europe, in EU. So other countries, not uh, Greece. Greece will serve just like uh, Albania as a springboard. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, we have the money laundering activity uh, from 2019 to 2022. And they used an NGO called FAFA, Foxtrot Alpha, Foxtrot Alpha. And the expert, he rendered the testimony to the public prosecutor, to uh, Mrs. Uh, is, is, is it FAFA FARA? Maybe it's FARA. Did they use FARA? FARA, sorry, FARA. Because it, Alpha. Uh, Romeo Alpha. Uh, they had an expert, those MEK. He was uh, Yewa Reza, the name. Well, I don't speak uh, Persian, so Parsi, so maybe I mispronounce uh, the name. Uh, this is quite a problem. And the idea is that people who try to create problems to MEK to expose their crimes, to render, uh, to uh, to force them to face the Albanian justice, get in the neck. I'm using a slang expression. For example, this uh, Elina Kombi, the public prosecutor, uh, she sent them to court in uh, March 2021. On 3rd of February 2022, she was fired. The vetting commission a combination of uh, Albanian uh, judges, prosecutors, and foreigners kicked her out of justice system. Oh, hold on, why? What, what did she do? Uh, what case did she bring against Mac? Uh, the, the famous, or I better say, the notorious uh, uh, Mohammad Sadat Darbandi, called also Kak. Adel. In Kurdish language, it means brother Adel. Kak Adel. Mohammad Sadat Darbandi. The chief, uh, the director of the prison of Ashraf camp in Yala province. Uh, time, sorry. Hey, uh, Jerzy, uh, I want you to do an explanation for yes. our foreign viewers. Because many foreign viewers do not understand how Albania works. Now we have this prosecutor. Her name was Miss. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Elina Kombi. Elina Kombi. She brings a case against a Mujahideen bandit, a thief, a criminal, whatever. Now, burglary. It uh, was two uh, cases of burglary. Bravo. Uh, this Kak uh, 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 Adel. Uh, was uh, the head of a gang of uh, juvenile Albanian burglars. He was okay. the ringleader. Now, I want you to explain to our non-Albanian viewers how can the Americans sack this Albanian prosecutor or whoever sacked her? Easy, easy. How does it work? I have no proof that the Americans sacked her. Sacked her. It was like this. It was a coincidence. She sent the case to court and she lost her job. Uh, Mrs. Anissa Chilibi, another public prosecutor, closed the case because they were freedom fighters and freedom fighters do not launder money. Okay, stop. So, so hold on. Hold on, hold on. One second. So Anissa Chilimi is another prosecutor who had yes. another case against the Mujahideen for money laundering. And what you are saying, I want to make it simple for those who see us from outside of Albania, because she complied with the advice who probably came from some other sources. She closed. Yes, no advice. I'm not aware of any advice. 
She simply closed the case because they were uh, freedom fighters and Bravo. freedom fighters do not launder money. Okay, so she closed the case against the Mujahideen. They said no problem. Let me let, let me explain for those who do and not understand. She passed the vetting process with uh, flying colors. She continues to be a public prosecutor in Tirana. Okay, okay uh, so let, let, let me explain this for our foreign viewers. Uh, U.S. Embassy is directing a process called vetting in Albania. It is a backing and supporting even uh, financial support in this process together with the uh, European Union. Okay, so this vetting process for the foreigners who do not understand us is like this. The Americans, the Europeans have forced our, gover our parliament to pass a law on vetting judges and prosecutors. The claim by U.S. So, a board made up, composed of Albanians and foreigners. Okay, uh, so uh, please let me finish and then you correct me. Now, the main person who pushes for vetting in Albania and who says that heads are going to be rolled is Her Excellency, the U.S. Ambassador in Tirana. Now, what happens is that, let us say, if me and Jerzy, we are prosecutors or judges, there is a committee who investigates us. And they check, for example, Olsi worked for 10 years as prosecutor. How much money he has? What cases did he have? And if they find that I made some mistake, they tell me one day, look, we investigated your file. We found that you have much more money than you got salary. And we think that you are corrupt and you have to lose your job. Now, we come to Anissa Chilimi, because we mentioned two prosecutors here. One is Anissa Chilimi, who closes a case of 1 million euro money laundering by the... 1.2 million euro. 1.2 million euro, who says that Mujahideen, they didn't do any crime to launder money in Albania because they are fighting Iran, and the justification that Mujahideen gave for laundering the money, they said, look, we have to hide the money because if Iran understands that we have money, they are going to kill us. And this uh, uh, prosecutor who said, oh, these people, they are good guys, they are allowed to do money laundering, she passes the vetting. While we have this other prosecutor, uh, Miss, uh, what was her name, Elona... Elina Combi. Elina Combi. Elina Combi, who uh, opens a case against a Mujahideen burglar. And sends the case to court. Sends the case to court. She sends the case to court. That for some reason, she loses the vetting process. And uh, no, she, uh, uh, she loses and she is sacked. She goes home. Now, Georgie, are we going to do it a bit personal? Are we going to go to your case to show some details about your case or, or another time? Yes, uh, I had a uh, one-minute uh, job. It is a one-minute job. Uh, I sued a certain Behzat Safari, one of the uh, commanders of MEK, because he accused me of being an Iranian spy. And this was uh, an insult to me. I accused him of uh, libel. And uh, uh, I had three judges, mm -hmm. one uh, another one uh, ended in prison for corruption. The third judge, Miss Besiana Garzenai, uh, ruled that uh, the safari is in. So you have this uh, judge, Besiana Garzenai. Was she the one that had this video? It is. Uh... It, it, it is. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, we have to talk about it after twelve o'clock. Sorry. Okay. So uh, we we have this, this lady Bessiana, who uh, 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 even though you went to court, even you uh, though you asked oh. Uh, oh. the the found before the verdict of Bezat Safari being innocent, she passed the vetting process with flying colors. Another coincidence. So, so you have Bessiana who takes the side of Behzat Safari, whereby no, she she passed a verdict, no side taking. She is a judge. I respect the verdict of a judge. Of course, I send the, uh, the case to the appeal court. It's normal, but I respect her verdict.
she declared the Zad Safari to be innocent. Now so, we have another legal battle at the Court of Appeal, but I respect her verdict. The so, Zad Safari and the coincidence of uh, passing uh, the vetting process a couple of months before this verdict with flying colors. Always okay, flying colors. so let, let me summarize for our foreign viewers. Uh, the Mujahideen accused you of uh, Behzad Safari, accused you of being an Iranian spy. You sent Behzad Safari to court, telling to him to prove that you are an Iranian spy. Throughout your court case, Behzad Safari could not prove anything. There was no document, anything. And uh, if I, my point of view, he could prove nothing. Yeah, and, 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 and if I'm not wrong, oh, yes, you, and if I'm not wrong, you even wrote to the U.S. Embassy in Tirana to help in this process, and if they have any document to prove that you have, did you do, did you send a letter to U.S. Embassy to prove if you are an Iranian spy or not or not? Yes, I sent a registered letter to U.S. Embassy in Tirana and several other foreign embassies. I do not ask for help from them. I informed them that American citizens had uh, signed affidavits that uh, I am an Iranian spy. One of these uh, citizens was a retired colonel of uh, American military police. Okay, so let, let, let me share this letter uh, of this, uh, this uh, colonel. Here is, by the way, Hassan Herani, the person whom the Mujahideen claim that he gives us 5,000 euro salary every month. Is he the guy, Georgi? Yes, uh, he is the guy, but I like uh, what is uh, behind his back. Yeah, we are in, we are in the in the in the in the parliament of Albania with uh, yes in the premises in the in the building of the parliament of the Alban of Albania and it is the second floor yes the, uh, this uh, background is second floor so, so not here, ground second floor so here is Hassan Irani uh, giving to us a check of ten thousand euro but the check writes for, uh, payment from. Mariam Rajabi, my God. Okay, <laughs> Any, anyhow, so this is the gentleman that uh, the Mujahideen brought as a witness on uh, uh, to defend Behzad Safari. His name retired was... Retired Colonel Martin, retired Colonel Martin of military police. Okay, now in uh, this affidavit that uh, Wesley Martin sent in support of uh, Behzad Safari, he wrote a very interesting paragraph that I would like to share with our international viewers. This letter was written in 2020, if I'm not wrong. And uh, among yes, other... uh, It was uh, September or October. There, there is the date. Uh, you have two photos. Yeah, uh, the I other... have, yeah, I have to show the other one. But I'm showing this one because this one was very, very, very interesting. In this letter, uh, Wesley Martin says, a year and a half ago, in support of Rudy Giuliani's security firm, I was involved in conducting a security assess assessment of, of Ashraf 3. This assessment was done in coordination with U.S. Embassy in Tirana and Albanian Ministry of Interior. One of the security concerns we found was former MEC members who had been recruited by the Moys to work on behalf of the Iranian regime while remaining in Albania. Now, uh, uh, what is interesting in this letter is uh, that we have this retired American colonel who admits that U.S. Embassy in Tirana is coordinating the security of the Mujahideens. So, this is very interesting. While the Americans they try to distance officially themselves from the Mujahideens, this letter, what does it show, is that the security of the Mujahideens is being, in a way, supervised by the U.S. Embassy. What would you say about this, Jerzy? Uh, take it easy, please. Maybe the retired colonel was high because. Uh, he has violated Albanian law if he really did what he wrote there. Because he not work in Albania, we, as an expert on security, without being registered as such. 
he has to be part of a company. His company are hired by an Albanian company, a foreign company, but a registered one in Albania. You cannot work as an expert security in Albania without being registered, or you violate the Albanian law. Just like, what can I say, working as a teacher without being registered as such. So, a level of cooperation with the U U.S. Embassy in Tirana, which is something uh, science fiction. I call it science fiction. The, I hope one day American diplomats will declare whether he was telling the truth or he was high or he was drunk because officially U.S. Embassy has not her hand uh, its hand or its finger in Ashraf Street camp in Manus, where there are the inmates of uh, Rajavi cult. So either he is lying or U.S. diplomats in Tirana is lying, uh, are lying. This is it. Either or, either or, him or them. This is uh, this uh, the. Uh, the kernel of this, uh, uh, the the main thing in it, it is the main thing. In it. Well, uh, Georgi, for me, the testimony by Mr. Wesley Martin is quite interesting for a number of reasons. He has been one of those uh, soldiers who participated, maybe, I don't know what was his rank in 2003, in the invasion of Iraq, in the bombing of Iraq and among others, even in bombing of the Mujahideen camp. And I do not know if you have seen his testimony in the US Congress, where he mentions that during the invasion, when Camp Ashraf was bombed, Masoud Rajavi, the second husband of <coughs> Mariam Rajavi, was injured, and later he was uh, transferred to Paris for treatment, and maybe he died there. Now, uh, I don't know if M Mr. Wesley, what is his surname, Martin, has lost his mind, or he's saying the truth, but this is something very grave, which in a way proves my hypothesis that behind, and not only my hypothesis, but what uh, Suri.net told us, what Lapsi.al told us, what uh, Gazeta Shiparia told us, that we have the US Embassy in Albania, which <coughs> blackmails <coughs> prosecutors, judges, medias, journalists to hide facts about the Mujahideen. And let me, uh, re, uh, hold on, oh, no, no, let me finish, one second, please. Excuse me, no, 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 I love the truth, I love the truth. No American diplomat has blackmailed me to tell the truth. They have never, ever dared to blackmail me, one thing. Second, I have no shred of evidence that they are blackmailing judges and public prosecutors. They are simply coincidences. Those who uh, follow the tune of the MEK keep their jobs. The others lose their jobs. Coincidences. Coincidence is the king of this world. What can we do? Okay, let me review another coincidence. Uh, there is a TV channel in Albania, which you know very well, Klan. And they have yeah. this, this investigative program uh, called STOP. Now, one of the journalists of this investigative program, he told me like a year ago that uh, when uh, Sander Leshai deported this uh, Italian uh, journalist that uh, uh, Mariam Rajavi claims that he was an uh, uh, Iranian spy. What was his name? Darius? Can you recall his name? <laughs> Darius. Uh, Darius. Yeah, one of his parents was an uh, ethnic Italian. The other one was uh, an ethnic Iranian. Yeah, his mother was Iranian. So so uh, uh, the journalist with whom he worked in, in, in TV clan, he told me, Orsi, we have found dollars being smuggled by the Mujahideen in Albania with a bank seal coming from an Arab bank, but they, uh, he, since he didn't know which Arab bank was that, and he had used this guy Darius to infiltrate the Mujahideen with a hidden camera. And uh, what he told me, he told me we wanted to show this 
filming in our investigative program, uh, which is stopped, and we had somebody from U.S. Embassy telling us not to show it. So you tell me who's lying. Well, we are in the realm of hearsay talk. I need hard evidence, videos, documents like uh, I showed you about this uh, colonel, retired colonel of uh, U.S. police, uh, military police. So this is hearsay talk, dear friends. We need evidence. Evidence is this, that the Mujahideens are committing crime maybe on daily basis in Albania. Their crimes go unpunished. Whoever tries to investigate their crimes, to send them to court, loses his job if he is a civil servant. This is truth. Beyond this, we do not have facts up to now. Okay, let me make, let me make you another question. Between Albania and our allies, other NATO member countries like Greece, France, Italy, Austria, also Austria, uh, EU country, European Union country. And we aspire that one day Albania will become a member of European Union, just like Austria is nowadays. Okay, let me give you two, two other examples and you tell me what is going on. In, in 2018, <clears throat> when in Tirana we had a Canadian couple, Mustafa Mohamedi and Rubabe Mohamedi, and uh, my wife was acting as their lawyer, we had a group of Mujahideen who bet and hospitalized the Canadian couple because they were in Albania to meet their daughter, Somaya Mohamedi. When they made this public attack against this Canadian family, uh, we had uh, uh, six Mujahideens who were detained by Albanian police, sent to police station number four in Tirana. Now, according to Albanian law, <coughs> these people should have been in jail by now. And um, um, uh, not jail. They had to uh, be questioned, signed and stamped a minor paper, and then maybe they go to jail, maybe they are released, it depends. But the problem is that they were released without being questioned at all. Okay, so... Abra, Kadabra, <coughs> Machina, and they got released. This and is the... No, 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 listen. Let violation me... of procedure. Now, when we were in police station number four, and uh, of course the police were with the Canadian couple and us, who were the lawyers defending them, we have suddenly, uh, what, what is the name of this guy that uh, you sued him, who accused you for being inspired? Behzad uh, Safari. Be Be Safari. So we have Behzad Safari who comes to the police station with Margarita Kolya. Everything has been filmed by the police there. Uh, uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Kolya is uh, he, his lawyer. She was uh, his lawyer. Uh, during the court, when I took into court. Yeah, uh, maybe she's something even more because I saw when they were in police station, she was like pampering the head of Behzad, so maybe they are even closer than lawyers. Anyhow, when we were... Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> we have to go and see the, 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 the filming of uh, police station number four to prove if I'm lying or if I'm maybe losing my mind. But, so, what happened uh, when we were <coughs> in the police station, <clears throat> and uh, the chief of police was writing the report about the crime that was just committed, uh, an attack by a group of ex-terrorists against two Canadian citizens. Margarita Kola and Behzad Safari, when they come to the police station, uh, they tell to the police, we're working for the U.S. Embassy. And uh, this, yes, hold on, hold on a second. This thing... Yes, that Safari working for the uh, U.S. Embassy? Margarita, Margarita, Margarita Kola. Ah. Maybe in the capacity of uh, locally recruited staff. Maybe, maybe and, locally recruited staff. And and this question has been done even by Borzo Daragahi in the article that he wrote for the Independent. He asked Margarita Kola, "Are you working for U.S. Embassy or not?" And she was telling to me, "Are you blackmailing me? I don't want to respond to you." So when we were at the police station, she called the chief of the police, and with a a, a piece of paper that she had in her hand, she slaps him in the face and tells him, 
You have to listen what I'm telling because I'll suck you because we work for the U.S. Embassy. Now, you, t you tell me what is going on here. We have the people connected to the Mujahideen who claim that they work for the U.S. Embassy. We have this American retired colonel who said that <coughs> I came to uh, uh, provide security for the Mujahideen when in coordination with the U.S. Embassy. We have a journalist from TV clan who manages to film the money that Mujahideen take from certain Arab country, who he claims that we had people from U.S. Embassy who told us not to air it. So you tell me what is going on. Well, being a Christian, in the, uh, I will adopt the attitude of St. Thomas, doubting Thomas. If I do not touch the stigmata, I do not believe that Jesus Christ has uh, resuscitated. So Jesus Christ has come to life again. So I need hard evidence, a recording of a U.S. diplomat saying this or that, if, not just audio, video recording. If I have this, I promise to have him kicked out of the foggy bottom paying list to lose his job. But without a recording, audio and video recording, this is hearsay talk. He said that, uh, she said that. Evidence, my dear, evidence. It is your word against my word. What can we do? Okay, now in conclusion, how you can explain that the Mujahideen are doing so many crimes in Albania and our police are not acting against them? Is it, is it because there are some holy people? Is it because they are the freedom fighters who bring democracy to Iran? And because of this, our police, they are so kind and generous and tell to them, OK, you can kidnap people, you can keep hostages, you can keep prisoners of war, you, cannot, you can uh, separate people from their families, you can traffic people to Europe, you can traffic drugs, you can break the laws of Albania, of the European Union, but you are... You are, you are, uh, I mean, you are over us. I mean, you have some, uh, I mean, uh, Jersey, even the Americans do not have such protection. Saimir Tahiri, our minister of interior, or Lefter Koka, economy minister, they went to jail. Uh, no, no, uh, uh, environment minister, environment minister. The environment. So we're having ministers who are being jailed in Albania. <clears throat> we're having poor Albanian peasants who are being arrested and jailed only for providing shelter to poor Syrian refugees so that they cannot freeze during the night. So who are these Mujahideen in Jersey that they can do what you are telling to us? Who is protecting? Listen, we had even an Israeli who was running those pyramid schemes who was finally arrested and sent to jail by our authorities. I mean, the chosen people of God, the Israelis, you know, they, they went to jail. Are the Mujahideen? Yeah case of uh, ethnic Israelis and citizens of uh, the state of Israel in prison in Albania. Not only this uh, one with this uh, equipment, uh, eavesdropping equipment, also one running a call center, Forex, uh, Forex uh, trade, something like this. He went to prison for, for breaking the law. Only Jardins uh, have got uh, not protected by God. Anyway, now I'm uh, in earnest, I'm serious. Uh, I believe very soon Albanian police, Albanian judiciary, and also Premier Rama in person will have to choose between Fila and Karibdi, the two monsters. On one side, Mujahideen monsters, the other side will be Greek monsters, French monsters, Italian monster, Austrian monster, maybe even German monster, meaning these governments will complain directly. What happened with forex trade here? A lot of Jews came here and they used Albanian uh, persons to deceive poor uh, Europeans to steal their money. There were a lot of complaints, especially by the Germans, and Albanian people went to jail together with this Israeli. Some of these Jews managed to get out of Albania, but one of them was caught and he is in jail now. At least 
even a week before he was in jail. So the moment will come. Germans will complain, French will complain, Italians, Greek, Austrians. Premier Rama will give up and the Mujahideens will go to prison. This situation cannot continue anymore. It is becoming uh, too much, really too much. They have gone much beyond the red line, those uh, of the Javi cult. Even, let us suppose that really U.S. Embassy protects them, there is a limit in protection. U.S. Embassy in Tirana is not God. God can grant you limitless protection. There is a limit in the protection they can offer to the Mujahideen. If in Italy, uh, two stars general of Guardia di Finanza, financial police, goes to prison for a lot of things, including collusion with Albanian mafia, it means that if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, Mujahideens will end in prison for their collusion with Albanian organized crime and Drangheta, one of the mafias of Italy. They will go to prison. The day will come very soon. They are breaking Albanian law laws maybe on daily basis. The last uh, case was one day before, last night. Last night we had in January a case, and these are proven cases, not here and say talks. I offered names, surnames, details, details. And this is a problem. This is a problem. We shall have developments, new developments, but as an Albanian patriot, I'm afraid even my country will pay a price for those godforsaken people who have abused with the hospitality of the Albanians. They have abused it. Even Premier Rama might pay a certain person for it. He cannot anymore connive to such uh, activities violating Albanian laws just on, on, on the whims of uh, that woman, Rajavish. The, the, that's it. That's it, I believe. Okay, Georgia, but thank you. Thank you very much. I propose we close it for now. It's almost one hour and seven minutes. Thank you for our viewers throughout the world. So today we spoke about the Mujahideen Crime Syndicate in Albania, the latest scandal, and how uh, some hidden hand is in a way protecting the Mujahideen. And our media, our prosecutor, and everyone else is either deleting the article or losing his or her job. Jerzy, thank you very much. See you in the future. Have a good Thank night. You. Bye bye. Bye bye.